to kick us off? Uh, sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, solar uh, is actually uh, at a very point in the cycle, uh, broadly speaking. I'd say it's reached the plateau of the S-curve where prices have become very compelling with uh, mature products. And um, essentially, the cost of solar has declined by 95% over the last eight years, making it cheaper, really, than retail electricity uh, almost everywhere in the world. And so we're just seeing uh, uh, growing adoption really everywhere. And you know, nine countries are about 90% of demand today, and that's spreading out to you know, 50 countries over the last uh, um, over the next few years. So I've been an analyst in the space and a developer for um, you know about eight years, and um, started a California utility-scale developer that has half, half a gigawatt of projects in operation, and. Um, Currently, the analyst at Craig Hallam, which is a uh, institutional you know, research brokerage firm uh, based out of Minneapolis. Um, but want to introduce Mark Kirsten's, who's the uh, CEO of, um, of Beamreach for the last seven years, and previously with BP Solar. Uh, Beamreach has both a uh, disruptive cell uh, for solar and a unique, innovative uh, installation approach. So um, maybe I'll just start off big picture. Mark, why did you transition from Dirty power to clean power. Yeah, so so I spent the bulk of my career at BP and most of it on the uh, the not clean side of the business. So for my sins, I then uh, spent three years at BP Solar, uh, which is great. I mean, one of the larger solar companies, but obviously quite quickly, um, a lot of Chinese and other companies started gaining share and growing rapidly past us. And I felt it was important to move to a company where we were working on truly next generation technology. The 95% cost reduction doesn't just happen. It takes a lot of hard work, but it can't only come from little incremental improvements. You need to make step changes. And when I joined this company, I, uh, I was brought in through a recruiter and, and they made it clear this is really one of those technologies that is gonna truly be a game changer in this industry. And that's absolutely proven to be true. So that's why I transitioned from large corporate uh, BP to Beamreach, uh, which is a, a, a Silicon Valley-based startup that is just getting into revenue. It's a very exciting time for us. We turned into revenue about the last month or so, so we're just starting to ship our first product. It's, it's really, really exciting. We've been working on this a long time. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I just came actually about an hour ago, uh, landed here, or less than that probably, uh, from Vegas, where is the largest solar trade show in North America. Uh, we were absolutely, and um, you know, I'll be bragging a little bit, but we were the most popular booth at the whole show, which is awesome because there's like 1,500 exhibitors, and th there is not that much innovation in this industry. Uh, most companies spend very little money, very small percentage of their revenue on R&D. Uh, we have that, that's all we do. We, we we spend a lot of effort in developing, and 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 we clearly have hit a nerve, and we've had enormous positive response to our product. I think uh, to put solar a little bit in terms for this audience. It's not that dissimilar from going from supercomputing to distributed computing or from you know, fixed line monopoly telephony to you know, competitive you know, telecom Act 96 type competition. And as you do that, you get you know, better solutions and a um, you know, happier customer for you know, a lower cost. And, and you know, that's sort of the, the point of the cycle that we're at. And, um, you know, so Beamreach started with uh, disruptive cell technology and also uh, recently a um, easier way of installing solar and commercial flat rooftops. Um, mm -hmm. And if you drive through particularly Southern California or East Bay, you'll just see miles and miles of flat rooftops without solar. And I always ask myself, you know, why there is no solar given the great resource. So. Uh, maybe you could touch on yeah. the installation approach and how it solves some of those issues. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, a lot of roofs, and there's been some research done on this, up to 40% of flat roofs, because our product targets commercial roofs, so supermarkets, convention centers, data storage, anything flat, basically, um, big surfaces. And a lot of these roofs were built, these buildings were built when nobody ever thought about solar. And people typically don't over-engineer their building, so they only allow for so much margin by building code for how much weight you can put on those roofs for air conditioners and so. And then when they want to install solar, they realize the roof was never designed for it and can't handle the weight. Um, so then people have another, one option is drill holes in the roof and anchor it so you don't have to put these heavy, because the way a solar system is normally put on a roof, it's actually very 
clumsy. It's just bricks, <laughs> paver blocks, you know, patio blocks. You can get at the Home Depot. They put those things just to hold the system down. I mean, uh, of course, that rules out 40% of the roofs that are incapable of handling that weight. Our solution is completely different. We bond to the roof, and nobody else has ever done this. So it's a direct bonding to the roof. And we've, wi of course, we've tested this in wind tunnels and all sorts of things. It doesn't rip off. It's, it's absolutely solid. It will stay on that roof forever. Um, and it just opens up a huge market, a huge market that today is not served. So indeed, you fly into any airport and you look around, most of these flat roofs, there's not a single one that has solar on them. Well, here, you know, we're in a pretty sunny part of the country. All these roofs should be producing power, especially with expensive power and lots of sunshine. Why don't they have solar? Well, probably a lot of them can't handle the weight. So we just open up a huge new market that nobody's ever served before at all. Um, the second problem we're solving, and this is a really big deal too, is labor. Um, the cost of solar panels, you know, as Matt was just saying, uh, Brad, sorry, was, has done, come down dramatically. People have been squeezing out pennies. Where people haven't really made any breakthroughs is how you install these systems and doing it quicker. So we've come up with a system that is one part. There are no tools. There is no installation guides. Anyone can do it. Um, literally, training will take less than two minutes for someone to be able to install an entire roof. Everything comes in the box in one item. So the installation time is about five times faster. And labor is one of the biggest line items on the budget for installing a solar system. So on the one hand, we grow the market by 40%, all these roofs that nobody can touch. And on the secondly, even for those roofs where we can go head to head, where others do work that don't have the weight issue, we save the customer huge amounts of money in labor uh, by installing it incredibly fast. And in some parts of the world where they're struggling to find enough crews, it's not so much the labor savings, it's the fact that the crew is done, you know, after half a day as opposed to three days in so they can move on to the next project. So it actually allows them to grow the top line. They can do more projects because the same crew can take on a lot more products, a lot more projects. So those are two major advantages that we bring. There's a bunch of others, uh, but I think those have been the ones that have most caught the uh, imagination of our customers. And by the way, I was at Vegas uh, for the SPI conference as well and can verify that the booth was actually very busy. Um, and. Uh, it was interesting because on either side were two other racking solutions and you see a lot of pipes and bolts and washers and screws and next to it, uh, Beamreach just had a stack of their panels with the plastic casing and sort of the, the whole installation system and you know, it makes it pretty obvious how much easier it is. Um, you know, definitely, not, you know, Solar City bought one you know, racking you know, mounting company and, and you know, there's been some innovations but I think they're you know, fairly limited. Um, and, and I think that you sort of have, like in cell phones, you had the technology there long before the iPhone really existed. And, and you need to get to the point where you have uh, the ability for seamless adoption that makes the customer experience that much easier. And, um, you know, I think that that's, you know, the edge that, you know, Apple has had over, you know, Android, you know, to some degree. And, and, you know, I think that that's the point we're at in the cycle where you see some you know, maturation and, and, you know, finishing touches that make it, uh, you know, actually a much, you know, nicer end, end product. Um, and so then if you think about the cell business, uh, yeah. you know, solar cells are kind of like semiconductors where you have to reduce costs to be competitive. In semis, you have shrinks. Um, in solar, you have higher efficiency, so you get more electrons per, you know, square inch. Um, and you know, it enables cost reduction. And a lot of the cost reduction so far has been through scale. And I think the next phase of the cycle is you're gonna see actually really a lot more efficiency improvements, yeah. which is where you, know, you guys can probably play yeah. into it. So maybe you can touch on the uh, yeah. cell side of things. Yeah, so basically the company, when the company was founded, it was about the solar cells. So the cells, just to make sure we're all talking the same language, those are the little, little six inch by six inch. 60 of them typically make up a solar panel. So. That's where we spent the bulk of our time in the first years of the company with a very novel technology that would improve the performance at a lower cost, how much output you would get from every single panel. Um, and where we've gotten to on that point is we have a very interesting technology where the majority of solar panel makers are, you know, hovering at a particular wattage, about 260 watts, just as a number, hold that in mind. There's a few that have pushed 300 watts, so they're sitting on, you know, a good 12% above that, but they're peaking. 
And they would all admit that that's about it. We just don't know how to squeeze more juice out of these things. We're kind of, we're at the top of the S curve. And our technology, what's really nice about it is it adds another 20, 30 watts, so call it another 10, 12, 14% of output to that. And where it gets really interesting is with our cell technology, the capital equipment is about 80% the same as what these guys already have. There was a lot of solar companies in the late 2010s or late 2000s, I should say, early 2010 years that went out of business. Their capital set was entirely unique. I mean, they designed everything from the ground up, which is dangerous, it's expensive. We are completely the opposite. Everything we buy are standard tools. We make some modifications, but fundamentally they're existing tools. So what happens is our, we are working with partners. So rather than us having to raise huge amounts of capital to build a factory from scratch, which is extremely expensive, and particularly for a smaller company, the cost of money is, is, is of course quite high. We go to these manufacturers that already have significant factories, and we say 80% of your capital, keep it. Just buy a few extra tools, you can upgrade, and you just get yourself 15% more output. Your lines produce more power, and you can sell the product at a higher premium because you've made yourself a more powerful product. So our scale-up model, and this has been the holdup for a lot of solar companies, requires very little or maybe no capex at all. So we let someone else spend the money, we bring the R&D and the intellectual property, and that's how we end up scaling up this model. That hasn't really been done before much. It's a great way of doing it. It's one of the things that has held back, I think, investors from investing in the space, looking at this huge price tag for scaling into material revenue. And we found a very clever solution for doing that. So today, because we're, we're, we're finishing off the development of that cell work, but we got such positive response from our customers for this lightweight frame with the fast install, that we said, okay, rather than wait until that cell development is scaled up, let's just use somebody else's cells, pr procure high quality top tier, and integrate them in our frames and racking, get traction in the marketplace, start generating revenue, start generating ca positive cash flow, and create sort of a launching pad, and then we'll introduce our own cells when they're ready and they lift the performance up even further in 2017. So it kind of becomes a two, you know, one-two punch approach where we hit the market right now, we can hit it very hard and scale very fast, much faster than you normally would if you had to build it all from scratch yourself. And then we start phasing in our own technology that lifts performance even higher and also comes at an even higher price premium. So that's, our, that's sort of in a macro level the, the strategy of the company and that's, that's playing out very well. Yeah, with solar systems, you have basically the cost of the module and then what they call BOS is, you know, the installation time and cabling and mounting. And, um, you know, the module, I think, you know, say five years ago was two-thirds of the cost. And now it's only, whether it's residential, commercial, a quarter or a third of the cost. And so that, that BOS segment is the key path, really, to reducing the cost per kilowatt hour that you would pay as an end customer, whether it be really residential or commercial. Um, and so then, uh, you know, as, how much do you see uh, installers saving in terms of time and money using your solution, basically? Well, we're seeing a 5x faster install time. So, so the time on the roof is, is five times less, which is, which is dramatic. And there's a whole bunch of other advantages. We won't go into all the great detail, but we are able to put the solar panels much closer together. Normally, early morning or late afternoon sun, one row of panels shades the next and then knocks the whole thing out, or most of it. The way we wire them together doesn't have that problem. So when you really want to get the most out of your roof, you don't want to just buy high performance panels. You also want to put as many of them as you can on the roof. And we don't have the weight issue, so sticking more of them on the roof doesn't, doesn't matter. We're still well below the weight tolerances. So um, putting it all together, the nice thing is we can sell this product at a very material price premium on a per watt basis and the customer ends up with lower cost power because they, we enable all these savings for them. So we are currently signing deals with customers where we are displacing you know, brand names that are you know, known in the solar industry and several of them actually are well-known household names. Probably all of you may have products of those brands in your homes. Um, and we are displacing them as a brand new company and customers are paying us a premium as opposed to saying, hey, you're new, you're not proven yet, you need to show us a discount. It's been quite the opposite, which is pretty remarkable, getting a premium over you know, one of the world's most well-known brands uh, for a brand new product. And, and that shows the power of finding these savings for customers in areas where, frankly, nobody has looked. I mean, the savings we can deliver on labor alone 
are probably larger than what the whole industry has been working on for the last three years to try and squeeze that out of the module. You know, because it's really hard. The modules have gotten to a point there is not all that much more squeezing you can do. So we just enabled, we tapped into this, in the bulk of the spend, which frankly hasn't been really addressed very well and trying to squeeze cost out of there. Yeah, we were talking about a large retailer that had paused their uh, solar expansion really because they just didn't have enough, you know, rooftop, you know, sort of weight bearing load and, you know, these roofs really last 10 years and solar panels last for 35, which is always kind of part of the problem uh, with any type of rooftop installation. So um, do you think that some of these bigger retailers will start to uh, accelerate their plans Yeah. You know, based on this? Absolutely. I mean, so, so retailers have become the largest users of distributed power, right? They, they, whether it's Ikea, Walmart, Costco, Target, every one of them has a program and they're all trying to get solar there, not just to be doing the right thing for the planet, which of course is very important too, but it saves them money. As, as Brett was saying, the numbers pencil out. Um, so it's a real bummer then if you have stores where you can't put it on because of the weight. Uh, but another problem has started to emerge, and now that people have been doing this for about 10 years, I did the first you know, retail stores at, at BP Solar you know, nine years ago. These stores, the roofs are now tired and need to be replaced. So now they start realizing the cost of ripping off an entire solar system, bringing it all the way back to the, you know, to ground level, putting a new roof on, pulling it all the way back up again, is blowing up their economics. And several retailers have effectively stopped expanding solar for that one and only reason. They underestimated how expensive it is to lift off the system and put it back on. Ours, it's extremely simple and extremely low cost. So I was told by I'll leave them unnamed, but a rather large retailer, a very large retailer, that look, this product can single-handedly get our program going again because you fixed what we see as a five, six hundred thousand dollar cost per store. You're going to probably come in well below a hundred thousand dollars. So all of a sudden, the economics pencil out again. So that's a pretty exciting. That, that Lily is less than 24-hour old news. Um, we probably didn't even emphasize that enough as we engage with customers, but the, the whole re-roofing issue is quite significant. Roofs don't last very long, so we found a solution for that as well, which, to be very honest, we hadn't even focused on, but it turned out to be, uh, it may well for some customers end up being the most important reason why they choose our product, so it's exciting. Mm -hmm. I guess we shouldn't talk about why BP, after you left, got out of the out of the business just when solar got really cheap, right? You know, I guess they like <laughs> the, uh, the, they like the uh, black energy. There is, there, I mean, you either have a truly differentiated product like we have, uh, and you can command the price premium, or you go for very, very, very large scale and you make it in the lowest cost country. Do you There's see, nothing uh, in between. Do you yeah, see opportunity internationally as well for your product? Oh, absolutely. I mean, frankly, the, the weight issues with roofs are, is, is even greater in countries where regulation has been a little lax. I mean, frankly, a number of Asian countries, uh, building codes were nowhere near as stringent as they are in Europe or in the United States. So the issue is an even bigger issue there than, than what we're experiencing here. We're starting here because it's our home base, um, but we are even this year expecting, we're actually installing a product right now in the north of France. So we are certainly moving into Europe, Australia, and, and, and targeting the rest of the world as well. Yeah. Well, thanks everyone for being here and uh, pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you. And if anyone has further questions, I'm, I'll be around and uh, happy to answer any further questions you may have. Thanks.